2015 was a landmark year for the discussion around artificial intelligence and its potential impact on business and society. Now, in 2016, we're very much part of the cognitive era. With me to discuss is Dr. Michael Karasik from IBM Watson. Michael, cognitive computing, this is really gaining traction. Tell me how this differs from analytics. The whole genesis of this big data thing was enormous amounts of data, the ill structure. And really, cognitive is a progression. If you have enough data that you can look at all of it, then you use technologies like Hadoop or Spark, and you can analyze all of it. What cognitive systems do is they really build a model from data, you train them on data, and then you use them against other data. So it's kind of like us. We learn stuff, and then we use it. So you teach a cognitive system about domain, it understands it, and it gets better just like we do over time. Well, what makes the Watson platform unique in its offering? Folks working in roughly spaces of AI and cognitive computing, and what you typically see is a company building a very niche application in a very specific domain. A lot of them are customer facing, assistants on phones, cars that know where they're going. And what we've decided to do is rather than build a specific application, we're building a platform so that others can. We think Cognitive is going to be huge. We want to help them by giving them a platform. You've recently announced some exciting new Watson platform capabilities. Tell me more about those. One of the things you'd like a system to do when you interact with it is to understand you. Technologies like speech recognition, natural language processing, machine learning, we've been doing that for quite a while. The next stage is really to understand the individual that the system is interacting with. So we have technologies like uh, motion and tone analysis that when you interact with the system actually understands your tone. Are you cranky? Are you happy? And on the other side, we just uh, made available a set of speech generation capabilities that ascribe uh, emotion to the speech. So the system can be enthusiastic or sympathetic or happy. And the idea is to react uh, to you in an appropriate way. How does this tech work exactly? Strata of understanding. At a high level you have like search engines, you know, you look for words. One level down you have uh, semantic search where transportation might match car, airplane, train, bus, feet. One level down actually from that you actually analyze the language and there's a science called psychometrics that correlates word use to psychology. So we built a version of language analysis for Watson, APIs around personality insights, for example, that we've calibrated with standard psychometric tests. So we, we analyze your word use in an email, in a collection of tweets, a couple thousand words, and we'll tell you something about you as an individual. Right, so tell me more about the Watson ecosystem and how IBM is working with entrepreneurs and startups on developing Watson-powered apps? Very simple. Companies typically come to us with an existing application, maybe it's a wellness concierge, and they add Watson capabilities from our platform to make their application more interesting, more cognitive, and have more value. And the future of cognitive computing? Where is IBM focusing its efforts? We expect cognitive computing applications to really be everywhere. Uh, they'll be transformational in industries. We're already beginning to see consumer-facing applications by us and by others. What we need to do is to make sure that this platform and set of capabilities is as usable by uh, others as it can possibly be. So we're expecting kind of a starburst effect as this thing becomes uh, pervasive in the industry. Thanks for watching. For more videos from our new economy, please subscribe.